Hey everyone, it's my break a neck anniversary. 14 years ago, I broke my neck. So I thought I would share with you guys the story of how that happened um, in celebration. So I broke my neck 14 years ago and I have no fine motor. I have great nails though, right? <laughs> no fine motor, um, no tricep use and I'm paralyzed from the breast line down. I have a neurogenic bowel and bladder. That's probably the worst part of the entire thing. Honestly, most spinal cord injuries would probably agree with me as well. Um, it's been a wild ride and it's been very eye-opening. And I think for me, more than anything, it's been pretty humbling in ways, even though I'm really arrogant still, so maybe not. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, so let's get to the story. I mean, I know some of you really don't know me. Um, so some of you may be a little curious about how I ended up in the chair. October 11th, 2003, I was working in a bar and restaurant. Um, I was cooking and some of my colleagues asked me if I would like to go out. And of course I was 18. What 18 year old says no. So I was partying it up and I was at the edge of a pool and I was in a, I wasn't in a swimsuit. So I had a big t-shirt on and um, underwear and I didn't want to jump in because I didn't want to expose myself. So I thought I'll dive in. And um, I asked the guy if it was deep enough to dive. He said yes and it was three feet deep. Um, little did I know that play pools in Arizona have a deep middle and shallow ends. I had grown up in Arizona or California and that really wasn't a thing. Uh, that I was aware of, you know, I was used to diving pools. So I assumed the other end was the shallow end and I definitely learned my lesson. So once I dove in, I actually heard my neck break, which I think is so crazy. Um, you could just hear it in the water, just like crack and shatter. And I went into spinal shock and I just thought, it's my time. Like, I thought I was going to die. And I saw my hands floating in front of me. Nothing moves when you go into spinal shock. And um, they pulled me out and I, they laid me back and I just went like this and you could just hear the crunching in my neck and I knew when one of the girls, I said, can you put my legs down? And she said, Gina, I already did. And I said, call 911, I can't feel my legs. Cause I just knew then, that was it. So the ambulance comes, the guy picks me up and um, he calls in, you know, possible C-spine fracture, blah, blah, blah. And I looked at him, <laughs> sorry for the language grandma, if you watch this, but, um, I looked up at him and I said, shit happens. And you know what's funny is I've always kind of just lived by that motto. Like, it happened. I just, I never really dwelled on it. And, um, you know, I've been a little jaded by the medical profession because the first surgery that they did actually immediately after my injury, they left a piece of my vertebrae on my spinal cord. I found out two months later after I had transferred to another unit, another hospital actually in California. And uh, went home the day before Christmas Eve. It was the day before Christmas, so Christmas Eve. That was my gift. Um, and I was in a halo for three months. So if any of you don't know what a halo is, it is a huge contraption that attaches to your head through screws and to your skull and you can't move you're just rigid and it comes down there's a vest plate and you can't get it wet it took me like three hours to shower and i'm a clean freak so you know i was doing that all the time and it was just time consuming so for three months uh i had that and then i saw the neurosurgeon for another uh, every month for three months and he said everything looks great oh god I'm like, okay, good. So I went to go do rehab, started having pain, and then I realized that I had to have surgery again because my neck was never fused. So that was kind of surprising. 
And then I had a bladder augmentation that had to be redone because it wasn't done correctly. Um, you know, I've learned my lesson and I've learned it the hard way. Um, it's crazy. I mean, this is my life. But uh, I realized I couldn't be a chef anymore. I wasn't gonna go to culinary school. Um, it's not exactly accessible. And so I decided to go to law school because <laughs> that's a close runner up for everyone, right? Um, so I got my bachelor's in political science and then I went on and I got my law degree. And I'm not practicing though, and, and nor do I want to really. <laughs> Sorry guys, um, but I'm doing advocacy and I really believe in it. I started Accessible Arizona, we're a chapter of the United Spinal Association and we are gonna do big things. We're gonna do really big things. I truly believe that, you know. I know everyone says, oh, you know, it happens for a reason. I don't know if I believe in that crap, but I do believe that you can make the best out of really bad situations. You can find opportunities in situations that you would never think you had opportunities in. You know, this spinal cord injury has opened more doors for me than closed it in my eyes. And that's because I choose to focus on the positive. You know, people ask me how I'm so happy. I don't think about what I can't do and I don't let a lot of things stop me. I mean, sure, I can't do a lot of physical activity, but I'm wants to do physical activity. We're in America, nobody wants to do physical activity, I'm fine. You know, if some more places were accessible, it's really hard for me to accept that uh, discrimination happens daily. Um, it's really hard for me to accept sometimes that businesses just don't want me in there. Um, that's hard. And that's why I started Accessible Arizona, so. It's been crazy, you know, 14 years. A lot of you that know me and have known me for a long time, you know that I was very active and always on the go. And I'm sure a lot of you thought this probably would defeat me, but uh, it hasn't. In fact, it has taught me more than I ever expected. So this is me and this is my disability. And I hope that by me showing you my life and being open with you, you know, you'll think of those people with disabilities and, you know, maybe open a door or make your business accessible. Or if you're someone with a disability, maybe you'll go out and go to school, do some advocacy. So I hope you all have an incredible day. I know I'm doing wine tasting tonight over at Posh. Yes, 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 yes. I'm excited. So. You guys all have a wonderful day and thank you for listening. <laughs>